<laughs> How are you? Good. I'm okay. I'm over here recovering from last night's earthquake. Girl, girl look. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? I was like, girl, tripping? Like, it was really intense. I got a, I woke up with a pimple. Girl. I got a stress. <laughs> Super intense. My legs were shaking. I was like, now, wait a minute. What is happening here? <laughs> How is quarantine life, queen? <laughs> um... <laughs> keeps turning no it's been really intense um I've been sleeping a lot I just got back on a normal sleep schedule at first I was kind of uh sleeping until like two o'clock in the afternoon and staying staying until 4 a.m yeah that was nuts but um I'm working out still and like writing which is nuts I I, like it's like what do you do hold on let me turn you up because I can't hear you okay I'm such a grandma. I'm so bad at these lives, like Girl. trying to. There we go. This is our <laughs> new normal, right? I know. Well, at least we can still hang out. I know. We can. So I have my water. Remember yesterday I said, should I bring wine? But I have water. So <laughs> I'm proud of you. Yes, I have the water. Staying so, hydrated. Staying hydrated. Congratulations on the season two pickup. Uh, oh, thank bigger. you. How did you guys find out that you guys got a pickup for season two? Okay, so this was hilarious because we didn't really know mm -hmm. um, until we were shooting, like, promo for it. So oh. we're, like, in the studio at BET, mm -hmm. and when I went there, I was asking everybody. I was uh -huh. like, hey, so, like, does anybody know, like, this, for real, I'm tired, and I just, I want to know, like, it's, it's hurting my soul to right. be, like, auditioning for other shows when I just want to do another season of this show. Right. And so, like, Tori, who does social media, was there, and I, like, <laughs> looked at her face, I was like, Tori. Did the show get picked up? She was like, I, I don't know. I don't know. Knowing it was picked up the whole time. Right. So we sit down to shoot these promos. And they're like, so how would you guys feel if oh. you got picked up for a second season? And I was like, huh? <laughs> and I just like yes. sat there. And I, everybody else was reacting. Like literally the rest of the cast was like, it was me. Um, and the girl plays Tracy Rashida. And the girl plays Veronica. Um. Oh my god, how am I forgetting her name right now? I'm such a butthole. Uh, you're, you're BFF, you're cat. Yes, I know, I know. Life. I know, I suck at life. Um, we're yeah. We we're were all sitting there and it was just like, oh, the show's picked up and we just started freaking out. I started crying. They they were like happy immediately and like believed it and I was just like, no, I don't really believe that. But, wow. Yeah. I mean, it definitely deserved a pickup. I mean, I'm super into it. It's super relatable. We'll get into all of that. Let's get into your character. So you play Lane Roberts. Yes. He's a quirky, um, I don't know how I would describe Lane. <laughs> how, would you, how would you describe Lane? Explain to us what is um, Lane to you. I always say Lane is a way cooler version of myself. She's quirky, <laughs> but she's still pretty self-confident. Like, she she's not kind of like trying to figure out if she's cool enough or good enough like she knows she's good enough it's right. just a matter of figuring out her life exactly. um she is a little selfish i would definitely use that word for her <laughs> right now hopefully that will be less of a trend um yeah that's that's really it she's kind of like even though she's middle-aged like she's 35 it's she's operating from a place of being i don't know 23 or 22 uh <laughs> which is is like confusing so I think she's a little like lost trying to figure out who she is. Right. She's still really fun. I just she's very selfish. <laughs> I'm gonna get more into Lane. Let's. You're from Philly. I right? am. I grew up in West Philly. So was this something acting that you always wanted to pursue? Being a comedian, being an actor, was this something you always wanted to do? What did you want to do? I like. Okay, so I wanted to be a dancer when I was little. Okay. And I was kind of encouraged to most of my life by my mom until I got to like high school and I was like okay so I'm gonna go to high school for dance because I'm gonna be a performer and she was like there's no way she was like you're going to school you're going to high school for college you're going to college I was like I do not want to do college prep in high school that's like what is that that's not even a major and right. she was just like no you have to do it so I did it and I was miserable and I was like cool I'm not going to college she was like you have to go to college I was like can I have college money she's like I don't have any college money so I go to college <laughs> You know what I mean? She was like, you need to go to college. I was like, well, do you got going to college money? Okay. Right. And I got into some really good schools, like right. very expensive schools. 
And I kept switching from school to school. And I was like, I think I hate this. Like, I'm miserable. So I dropped out. Also, I didn't have enough money to be in any of these expensive schools. Girl. So I dropped out. And then I just randomly moved to New York, randomly took, like, comedy classes and was like, oh, okay, I like this. And then somehow um, got in front of, like, a really big agent and got picked up by the agent. And, like, then my whole life kind of changed. Yeah. All of a sudden, I was, like, an actor. Like, this all happened... I think I moved to New York and I was there for three years before I got signed and started booking stuff, which was like really by mistake. Like I was really just like, what do I do with my life? Like, who am I now? And I don't know, acting somehow became the thing that like made me feel whole. So that's, that's what's been going on. But it was definitely a mistake. Like this was not like <laughs> a <good> every- mistake, <laughs> a, a beautiful mistake. You were right, in- like it. <laughs> Sometimes it is. <laughs> Right. No, it's a beautiful mistake. It is. You're, you're per- I mean, I couldn't see anybody else playing Lane. Like, you're perfect. I mean, Thank I couldn't you. see it. But you were working in New York, like, doing stand-up. Yes. And improv. Yes. And then you landed on Girl Code. MPD yes. Girl Code. Um, do you feel like, and also, like, your big break, though, was in admission with Tina Fey and Paul Rudd. That was, uh, so that happened before My- I did Girl Code. Okay. And that's when I was like, okay, like this is not this this is something I can't ignore. I was I was just like, oh, this is a joke. I'll do this for fun. And then I booked that movie, and I was like, so what am I doing? And it was funny because I was going through like probably one of the worst breakups in my life at the time. Right now, it's like, ha ha ha, that's so funny that I cried about that. But at the time, I was just like, I just want to leave New York. Like I went through this breakup. I was just like, am I an actor? And then the day I found out I booked that, I was like, how did I book a movie with like two people I admire so much? And my scenes were with them. And Paul Rudd was really sweet. Tina Fey was really sweet. And I was like, okay, so I have to listen to like what's happening around me and just keep doing this. Right. Yeah, that was nuts. That was really nuts. Do you feel like those two like big moments in your career, like early on, prepared you for where you are now? Um, sort of. It was such a big jump in time between that stuff happening and me booking bigger. Like, when I booked bigger, I was at a point where I was ready to stop acting. Like, I was really just really having a not fun time. It was a lot of the things that I was auditioning for were great parts, Mm -hmm. but not stuff that I felt like fit me or uh, without talking crap about (laughs) auditioning stuff that I just didn't think um, I need to be portraying as a black woman, if that makes sense. Right. Also, a lot of stuff was asking for tons of full nudity, lots of graphic sex. And while there is sex in our show um, and bigger, I like the sex in the show. I think it's really cool to see a black woman have agency in her sex life. Right. And I love all the sex in our show. I think it's really cool. As much as it stressed me out the shooting. Because <laughs> sex I have those stress. questions. Yes, we'll get into that for sure. Yes, yes, yes. Um, it was just like a lot of the stuff I was like, yeah, it would be great if I booked this, but why do I have to be completely naked to be funny? Or right. why does the butt of every joke have to be my blackness? Or or why do I have to be like sexually assaulted to tell a story? Like it was just too much of that. And I was just like, is acting for me? Is this what it means to be a black actress? So I was ready to give up. And I mean, that was like probably like an eight year span between mm-hmm. bigger and like me just having fun and felt, it felt like my career was kind of happening to me by mistake and it was so fun when it was that and then when it turned into I need to book a big job it became mm-hmm. really stressful really really yeah. stressful and then I was like I quit and then bigger happened which and is how it always goes which is how it always goes because God is like shining down on us and he's like okay I'm ready to give you this you've been yes. waiting long enough but so speaking of where you were in that moment of wanting to give up, how did you, where were you when you got the call to au- even audition for Bigger? Like where, oh. where were you mentally? Where were you? I mentally? was, this was like last year, mm-hmm. like in March, mm-hmm. I want to say. March feels right. And I had a day job at the time because I would literally completely run out of money. So I was working at this place. Like, it was a nightmare. The people, it was a hotel, and the guests that would come there were so nasty to me. It was, like, out of control. Like, one woman wrote a racist review about me. And I was just like, so this is what I'm doing. I'm 35. I work somewhere I hate working. I'm not acting. I just live in L.A., and I pay, like, I I work to pay my rent. And it was just like, okay. And it was pilot season, so there were, like, a million auditions, and they were good. 
I was getting really close to stuff, but then I would lose it to somebody super famous. And I was like, okay, so I'm not super famous. I'm broke. I work at a hotel. Like, what is happening with my life? Right. And it was like one of my days off, I got the email for Bigger. It was like, oh, here's an audition. Here's a script. Let us know what you think about it. And I was reading this script and I was like, what the fuck? Like, why does this girl talk like me? Like, Lay's speech patterns are mine. Right. It was very, very weird. I was like, why does this girl sound like me? Like, I never get a script. Actually, one other time, it was a show called I Love Beck and Lucy, and the character, and Lucy sounded exactly like me, too, mm -hmm. um, but like younger. But this was me. It was adult me. Like a lot of the stuff Lane's going through, I was like, what the fuck? This is so weird. This is just so much like me. And um, I remember screen grabbing like one of the jokes and te texting it to a friend and being like, oh my God, like, what is this? This isn't real. And I was looking at it and I was like, oh, it's produced by Will Packer and it's gonna, it's ordered to series. I was like, this is a lie. I was like, this is a lie. It was like number one on the call sheet. Like all this stuff that I had been dreaming of, right? Like right. literally. And I was like, dream role, dream, dream, like everything. And I was just like, this isn't real. I'm, I'm going to go in. And I emailed my agent. And I was like, yo, I love this. I'm absolutely going to go in. Right. And so I went in for it for the first audition. And um, I went in with Robbie Reed. And she's wonderful. Yes. It's just so, like, fantastic. I got called back in the room. They were like, you're coming back tomorrow. They printed out a full script, gave it to me. I came back for producer session I want to say mm -hmm. and then I finally got to meet Felicia and Devon I mean that room was like the warmest uh producer session I've ever been in they were just sitting wow. there like hi I mean they were like that to everybody they were just like oh look at all these beautiful black actors in here just being silly and it was just beautiful and so I emailed my reps after and I was like yeah I really want this job I don't know who you have to call <laughs> right but I need, I need you job. to get on the phone with everybody I need to test for this role like I want this Right. So then I think we waited two weeks and they were like, okay, so we're doing a chem read and a screen test and a network thing all in one day. So this was like a whole day of auditioning. I auditioned with all the Reggies, which was hilarious. Um, Terrence, who booked it. Mm -hmm. I remember when he came in the room, everybody like casting lost their shit. Like he's gorgeous. He's like super tall. And also he's hilarious. Like he was so fun. And I was like, oh my God, I hope he gets it. I hope I get it. Right. Um, and then we tested like the groups, the friend groups, mm -hmm. and the current you guys friend are group. Bomb. Your chemistry is so good. Everybody's so fun and so talented. It's it's nuts. Like I remember when we tested with that first group, I was just like, oh my god! Like if we all booked this, this would be a dream job. Right. Like to work with people who are that talented, it really makes you be on your toes as an actor, and you have to be more talented. And it was Definitely. just we were just all feeding off each other, and they're just also like lighthearted and fun and excited to be there. Like it was just perfect. So then that day ended with me not knowing if I got it, even though it was, it felt like I got it. I was like, all right, I've been here all day, but who knows? They were like, can you come back tomorrow to test with the, with the Dion's? So I was like, okay. And then I got there and I was the only lane there with oh, like right. two Dion's. And I was like, they were like, you know, you have a role, right? And I was like, no, I don't know. And this, this two guys auditioning for Dion. I was like, I don't know about that. And they were like, where's the other lane, Tanisha? <laughs> right. And I was like, Ew. in the bathroom? They're coming later on today? I don't know. I was like, until I get an offer letter. So anyway, that day went. And uh, later on that day, I found out I booked it. And it was, I fell on the floor crying. It was wonderful. I moved to Atlanta like four days later. And that was, that was And that. here we are. And here we are. <laughs> here we are. I love the show's message of is there something bigger, right? I find it very relatable. I'm 36 and I completely like, okay, wait a minute. You know, like I felt myself in some of the different scenes and episodes. I was like, wait, I totally relate to it or I know somebody who relates to it. Tell me what was your favorite part of bringing Lane to screen? How did you connect with her to, obviously you all are alike, but what did you bring to bring her to screen for people to say, ah, oh, there's that's me lane is me i think um with lane i just had to make sure i was really honest mm -hmm. and like i get caught up in trying to be funny because i was a comedian for so long right. that like the, the like really strong emotional core of hers that needed to be there because she does some real messy stuff mm -hmm. and it needs to be portrayed in a way that um, she's not a bad person. Like, she's just making these decisions, like, in the moment. Just stuff she's never done before. So she's just doing it to see what'll happen. Right. Um, so that was that was the most important part to me, was to make sure I was portraying her from an honest place. And I was relating her actions to um, actions I've done that have been messy like that. I've done some really messy stuff. I definitely wasn't engaged and then had sex with someone. 
but I've done some stupid stuff. Like I've messed with people's hearts that I've cared about a lot and like right. lost them and all that kind of stuff. So I just wanted to make sure I was being honest with myself and honest with the story that I was supposed to tell. So everybody would see it and kind of be like, oh, that's messed up, but I get where she's coming from. So like every once in a while I'll get tweets like that when they're not dragging lane. Mm-hmm. And it always feels really, they're like, I get it. I've been through that. I had two dudes in my life. and. <laughs> Things are missing from one, so I was messing with the other, and like, so that's that's nice, but that's definitely that was the most important part to me for her. And then you're breaking the fourth wall. I love how you're talking to the audience. Whose idea was that? Was that a collaborative idea between you and the writers, or how did or the producers? How did that come about? Um, that was actually Felicia Mary, who created the show. Um, she's a very big fan of Fleabag, mm-hmm. and, and she's my star. I have to say. She, oh, she just saw. Um, yeah. she's lovely. Uh, yeah. You should talk to her. She's yeah. she's incredible. She's an incredible, incredible person. Um, mm-hmm. I'm so lucky to get to work for her and with her, yeah. because everything was very collaborative with her. It was never like do this and shut up. It was always like, oh, okay, you did that. Let's try it this way. Or what if we did these two things? Or what if we changed this line? What do you think about this line? It it was so much. Um, there was so much respect there from her of my work. Right. So when we got to the fourth wall stuff, because we would shoot um, just like the regular version of the scene, and they'd be like, all right, so we're going to set up the camera, and this is going to be like your fourth wall. And we kind of, I would have a different tone. And it was really finding like who we wanted the second lane to be. Second lane is like, hey, guys, here's what's really going the fuck on. And right. then there's like the, the stuff she does in front of her friends or like the guy she's, she's dating that's like really different. Oh, my God, I'm so jacked up on caffeine. Like, I'm like, no, that's what we do these for so people can like get an inside like view into it. I'm, I think we're all here for this. So tell me, speaking of like your, the writers and the producers and Felicia, the, um, the subject matter on this show is very, like I said, relatable. People can watch your show and say, this has happened to me or I know somebody this has happened to. But for that to go over well with the audience, it has to be authentic. And so your writer's room, I believe it's, mostly made up of females who are african-american is that correct yes Yes. how important is that to have on a show like yours to have that authentic representation of the voices that we see i think well for me that was part of what determined whether or not i was going to take the job to be honest i when i read a script that hasn't had input from Mm -hmm. black women that's supposed to be about black women i can tell immediately um it's usually kind of not relatable feels very surfacey right um, this script has so much heart to it actually every all 10 scripts i mean and some of them were written by men mm-hmm. but still had a very because there are women putting input into a black woman especially everything still rings true right um, and i think that's what like as a black woman when i watch tv shows that have black women in them i want to feel like oh this is real i don't want it to feel like this could be anybody or this is quote unquote colorblind Right. And I don't need it to be like, hey, I'm black. I'm a lady. I'm black. Like, you, I don't need that. But I need it to be, like, realistic. Right. You know, like, epic. So, otherwise, why do it? I don't, I don't need you to fake write a show about black ladies. Right. Like, just don't do it. Um, so, yeah, our writer's room was very, they were very caught up in making sure that the story was authentic and real. And that black women that watch it can relate to it. Definitely. Would you like to write or direct or go behind the scenes on this show? On bigger, I don't know. I don't know if I can write good enough for the show. I gotta be honest. Like the writing on our show is really good. Like I, I said to Felicia, I wanted to like write, and I was like, I'll write a spec, and then I was just like totally intimidated. Like our right. show's really good, and our writers are so talented. I, I just, I just do my little improv here and there on the show. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. So let's get into okay, great. So first, I thought you, I'm sorry for the people who haven't watched, you should go and like stream it right now. Because yes. what are yes. people, do? I mean, we're home, we're in quarantine. So go yes. and watch it on yes. DC Plus. But I thought you were going to go with Greg, you know, he was safe and it was, oh, and then <laughs> Dion, you know, he was comfortable, familiar, you're a friend, a friend, right? Yes. Yes. And then at the end, I was kind of like, wait a minute, what's going on? How will this play out? Do you know how that will play out? Mm, I know some things. I know some things. Can you give things. us a little, like a little, little hint? At how that I, can I out? give you any hints? I can do it. Can can you, Felicia sure. will, as soon as I get off this face, this is not FaceTime. This okay. live, she will threaten my life. Okay. Um, I know sure. some things. I know many things. But um, 
I can't, yeah, I don't want to spoil anything. I get why you would think Lane would be with Greg. Yeah. I, that would have been really rough for her. Because I think she would have, I've, I've done a similar, not done a similar situation, but I dated somebody for a really long time. And it got to be like a year and a half. And I was just kind of like, I do not like you. <laughs> like, I'm in this just because this feels like I'm, I'm like checking off check boxes. Like, you're not going to go anywhere. Right. And then, and then all of a sudden I started realizing that I hated everything about him. Oh no. And he broke up with me and I was like, great. <laughs> so have you ever, have you ever dated a Reggie? Uh, have I ever dated a Reggie? I don't think I have. I'm like, Reggie's are really like Reggie type dudes, like, like side dudes or dudes that are like, I'm just going to give you the D. They scare me. <laughs> that scared me too. I was like, no, wait a minute. He was like comfortable with it. I'm just, yes. okay, I'm just a side dude. Like, what? Yes. That's I, And also, I don't know how to do that. Like, I can't just have sex with people. Like, I'm going to show up at your house and be like, hey, I'm your girlfriend. <laughs> like, hey. Let me in. Let me in. Exactly. I'm your Let girlfriend. I'm outside. <laughs> so those scenes with Reggie, were they... Did, did you have a body double or was it you in? Um, so for some of the scenes, there was a body double. Okay. Um, for some of them, not a body double. Okay. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um, and it's funny because when they asked me about the body double, they were like, oh, man, like, who do you want? And I was like, I want Meg the Stallion. And they were like, we cannot get you Meg the Stallion. I was <laughs> like, no one's going to believe that. No one's going to do it. I can't. So they got me a little teeny Megish the stallion, I say. She's like gorgeous and right. has like she's way like curvier than I am. Like her body's sick. Okay. And I was like, great, I like this lie. I like this. Lie. <laughs> and I was like, Girl, this is what I want. Yes. Because I mean, I was like, oh wow. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I'm not that limber. I'm not that limber. Like, <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say on that. Again, everybody <laughs> needs to go and stream bigger on BT Plus right now. You know what else I love about the show though is the friendship, the black women's friendship. Yes. Like you guys were friends since college, and many of us can relate to carrying over our friendships from school throughout our to adulthood. I love the d dynamic between you two, um, and I love how you guys show it that it's important to stick together and be there for each other. Um, yes. Did you guys know each other prior to the show? No, it's crazy. Um, Angel Conwell, who plays Veronica, she actually, I don't think she was, did she test with me? Yeah, she did. Okay. So we all, we were in like these separate rooms and separate areas while testing. I had never met anybody before. Mm -hmm. And there were so many people there the day of testing. But they threw us in this room together and we tested. And I was like, whoa, this felt really good. Like this felt like normal friends. And then once we all found out we booked it, once we got to Atlanta, we just all started hanging out. And um, Angel and Rashida are like the sweetest people ever. Um, it was just very easy to be like, oh yeah, we're, we're, we've been best friends forever. Of course we are. We have been, this makes sense. So it was such a, a natural chemistry on screen. Yes. And they're very funny and just right, like ready to improvise, ready to like whatever. Was... Yes. So Tanisha, we are in a space now where everybody's home. Everybody's trying to figure out, okay, I'm home. So how do I create? What do I create? Do I cook? Do I make hand sanitizer? <laughs> like, what do, I do? <laughs> what do I do? And I know that you would put up your YouTube skits. And that also, back in the day, that also would help you with being seen, right? Because you may not have necessarily booked a good job, but you were, you were putting out your work. So yes, you, yes. Do you think that it's important for creatives? I'm not going to say especially now because people are dealing with this in all types of ways. But yeah. do you think that it's important for creatives to not just wait for the opportunity, but to put out whatever it is, their work out to the public so people can at least see it? And that it's out, hmm. whether it's good or bad. What do you think? I think I think it's really important to create just because you'll get better as you create more things. Um, like your taste will change and everything will sharpen. It's really hard to create right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I started off in the first like I don't know two weeks of this like writing a lot. Like I was really doing good because I thought it was gonna end. And also we were supposed to shoot the show, so I was like, oh, this is all gonna end. Like we'll be fine. And then it was like, oh, are we gonna be fine? And now I'm like, I don't know what's happening now. So it's so hard. 
start to put my brain in a space that is um, creative and like creating good material. Right. But yes, it is very important to constantly be creating, constantly writing. You're only going to get better at things the more you do it. Uh, as an actor, especially, you have to always be acting. You got to always be in an acting class, always like have an accountability group with your actor friends, like just practicing scenes, always reading books about acting or reading in general, and also spending time with your friends and people you care about. It's going to help you be a better actor and writer. Right. But right now, it's really hard. Like, it's, it's, I, I don't want to write anything. I just want to sleep and eat bread. <laughs> and I think that that's totally okay. I'm glad that you brought that up because I think that that's, we should have that because there have been so many memes or like quotes going around like, yes. you're not coming out of this with your book. <laughs> you're not coming out of this with, I mean, it's insane. And so I think that that's important that you say, because that's, people are, go, we're going through a, a trauma, basically. Yes, every day, every yeah. day. Like, I was going to do a whole thing with, like, my hair and my makeup today, and I just, like, there was literally an earthquake last night. And I was like, you know what, I'm not, <laughs> I was like, I'm going to put some foundation on, but I can't do all this. Not today. I can't. I just don't have it. I just don't have it in me to uh, glam it out, you know? So, yeah, take your time and deal with this the way you can. And when you feel better, you'll be able to create something. Tanisha, on that note, Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you for having me. Do you know when you guys will come back? Do you have any ideas? I don't. I am. <laughs> I don't know, girl. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. We're definitely coming back. Uh, okay. Felicia has been running a writer's room. We're, we're still in pre-production. It's just a matter of when it'll be safe for us to start again. Right. Um, and it looks like they're starting to, for some reason, open up parts of Georgia. I don't really I understand how that's the thing. But um, I'm not trying to be over there until it's safe. So <laughs> Exactly. You stay your butt here until it's safe. <laughs> it says, like, in L.A., we have kind of a stay. Yeah, until the 15th, I think. Yes. It's, yeah. So. so I don't foresee starting before then, but... Um, yeah, this is weird. I don't. <laughs> I'm, try I'm trying to stay so positive for this. <laughs> I can't forget. We have 